Another video here. So since we are getting very close to the uh, 2004 federal, sorry, 2024 federal election in the United States, I just wanted to kind of explain how things work just for people who are really new to politics, maybe haven't been following, especially the United States politics, uh, politics very much. So the first thing I want to say is the way the American election work works, it's not by how many votes you get in total votes, right? It goes by the Electoral College, and there's 539 of them. You have to win 270, right? So California, for example, has 54, right? Biggest state in terms of population. They get the most electoral votes. And you'll have a state like, you know, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming. They only get three because of their really small population, right? So the goal here is to win as many seats, the electoral votes, as you can. So this is the way that the election is kind of playing out right now, but based off of the polls, right? We have a bunch of states here in the middle of America, which is nothing new for Trump, and a lot on the East Coast and West Coast for Biden, which is also nothing new. Um now, the way the polls are working right now, it's basically showing that Trump is up big in Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, and I think he's, he's either up or within the margin of error. So let's just for the sake, this is not my prediction. I just kind of want to show you uh, how this could work. So Trump, 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 and then you go Pennsylvania for Biden. We'll just give him Pennsylvania because it's his home state, and he won it last time. So we'll see what happens there. But if this is how the election goes, 293 for Trump, 245 for Biden. So Trump wins, right? But keep in mind, you must get to 270 in order to win. So here's the interesting part. Okay, we go down here to the third party option, which in most elections, we do not have to worry about this. But there is a guy by the name of Robert Kennedy Jr. who is running and he is polling uh, in double digits. I think it's actually a bit higher than that. I think he's above 20% nationally, but some polls make it very difficult to select him. Uh, but anyway, that's an, another uh, story for another video. But if Robert Kennedy Jr. comes in here, and let's just say, I'm again, I'm not making a prediction, but let's just say you go Wisconsin, Michigan. If Robert Kennedy can win those two states in this scenario, 268 for Trump, 245 for Biden, 25 for Robert Kennedy, a lot of people would look at this and say, oh, well, Trump wins. But remember what I said earlier in the video, you must get to 270. And in this model, if Robert Kennedy comes in here and wins, wish, was, takes Wisconsin and Michigan away from Trump, no one wins. And there's many other scenarios, right? Like Biden could win Michigan and then, you know, like let's just say Biden wins Michigan, right? That doesn't, you know, that also keeps Trump from winning. There's all kinds of different scenarios. But in this scenario, the one I want to talk about here is just particularly these two states. Wisconsin and Michigan, just for the fact to show you that this, if this does happen or anything like this happens, nobody would win the election. Well, what happens then? If no one wins the election, who's going to be the next president? Then what happens is you would then go to what's called a House vote. So each state has a certain amount of House representatives. They would get together and they would vote on behalf of their state getting one vote. So California, one vote. Montana, one vote. For a total of 50. Now to win to win the presidency in that um, election process, you would have to get 26 states, House members, to vote in your favor so that you can get 26 votes out of 50 to get the majority becoming president. Well, there's also a good chance that that doesn't happen either, and that could be 25-25 if Wisconsin and Mich Michigan, for example, decide, yeah, we're not going to we're not going to vote Robert Kennedy. They're going to go, go Trump or Biden. So it could be 25-25. Or maybe Wisconsin and Michigan say, hey, listen, the people voted Robert F. Kennedy. That's where our vote's going to be. But the House representatives do not have to listen to the people. They now get the vote. They would essentially be uh, deciding who the next president is. But again, because of the split and how close this could be, you could see 25 for Trump, 25 for Biden, or 25 for Trump and two for Kennedy and then 20, uh, 22 for or 23, I think, for Joe Biden. You could see something like that, too. Well, what happens then if you still can't get a current uh, a winner from the election? Well, then what happens is they would essentially just have to figure something out. And I believe that's actually what it says in the Constitution. There's no plan C here that's put in place in case this happens. Now, I don't believe it's happened in American history. It certainly hasn't happened in my lifetime. 
in most people's life. Actually, I, I don't think there's a single person alive who's ever seen anything like this. Right. The last time America voted a non-Republican or Democrat to be president, I believe was in the 1800s. Fact check me on that. I, I, I think it's in the 1800s. So it hasn't happened in a very, very long time. Let's just say around 150 years. So what happens then would be they would just have to figure something out, whether that's a re-election uh, federally with, with people just going back to the polls and re-voting, a uh, re-vote of the House the house vote maybe it goes to the senate whatever they feel is most appropriate that's what they're going to do and if this isn't resolved by the time inauguration day happens which is middle late january well then what happens is the current sitting prime minister kamala harris would temporarily be the next president of the united states until they figure this out so i know this is all very you know strange and complicated most people as i said are no, no people who are currently living have ever had a situation where no one got to 270 electorals. I am not predicting this. I'm just saying this could happen. It doesn't have to happen in exactly this way either, right? Like you could have Trump take Wisconsin and Michigan, and then you could have Kennedy, again, not making any prediction, but maybe he wins North Carolina. Maybe he wins Arizona. And again, 266 to 245 to 27 no one wins right so if robert kennedy takes a couple states away from the person that is winning which right now looks like it's donald trump no one wins now again maybe they go to the house after that and it's trump or it's biden who knows but it, it's going to get very strange potentially if robert kennedy can do really well in a concentrated area whether it's in north carolina or arizona or wisconsin michigan whichever it is right so this election is I know a lot of people are, you know, worried and you know anxious, and they're a bit, you know, scared to see you know, who's going to win and what's going to happen to the state of the country. And I understand, but keep in mind, Robert Kennedy, even if you don't think he's a serious candidate, could cause some serious damage in terms of keeping President Biden and President Trump from actually getting reelected. So I'd really like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section. Let me know if you were aware of this or if you didn't, if you weren't aware of this. Uh, what do you think about this? Do you think Robert Kennedy can maybe take a state like Minnesota? And maybe even, maybe he gets like in Ohio and all of a sudden he gets in Indiana and it's like, whoa, he's winning some states here. Again, I'm not predicting that. I don't think that's going to happen. I certainly don't think he would win because, I mean, look at all the states you'd have to flip, right? He'd, he'd have to get like Pennsylvania and Georgia and Florida and that's still not even close, right? But either way, let's reset this here. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Do you guys think that Robert Kennedy can make uh, do some damage in this election? Do you think that he's just you know, a third-party candidate who's not really serious? Uh, let me know what you think. I always like hearing your uh, opinions. I also, if you have any you know, future ideas that you want me to talk about on this channel, I'd be happy to, to consider those as well. And also, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps grow this channel. Thanks again so much for watching, guys, and I hope that you have a great day.